fiber network in Rockbridge County was funded by a federal BTOP grant, the three municipalities, and uh, Washington and Lee University. It went live in 2013. Prior to Rana, the county was paying over $120,000 annually for connections from the local phone company. Except for the high school, the only service they could get was 1.5 megabit T1 circuits, which were unstable, slow, and expensive. If you, if you look at the broadband availability map, you'll find that most of the schools are near the cities or major roads, and high speed is shown as available. Yet, there was no high speed service offered. Today, the county schools all have 50-50 or 100-100 megabit service on the RAN network, and the new middle school, which consolidates their traffic for filtering purposes, has a one gigabit surface, uh, circuit to access the internet. Uh, that's all at three-fifths of the earlier cost. Um, and it doesn't matter about E-rate in that situation because our service providers are E-rate qualified, so it all still goes through E-rate. It just the whole thing comes down. Uh, the speed and services were the same for Lexington City Schools as well as the Buena Vista City Schools. There's just no comparison to two 2013 that makes any sense. And the school districts now can deploy the latest uh, learning tools and content, which before they couldn't. Actually, before they couldn't even use the, their internet connection while they were testing. It was impossible. If they used the internet connection, the testing would go down. Uh, the communications business in the Commonwealth is competitive from a price and a service standpoint as long as other players can access a market. But the regulated monopoly model means that the local exchange carrier has all the business and there's no incentive for someone to enter the market. After deploying RAM and offering Central point, a central point to get access to large customers in the market, we have brought in several regional fiber networks or other phone companies to compete. In fact, two phone companies that are exchange carriers in other markets are now either offering or will offering services on the RANA network in con competition with the exchange carrier there. Uh, Washington and Lee University took advantage of the available competition. This is competition for long-haul carriers that didn't exist before. The only way to get out of the county was on the local exchange count of carrier. Um, they have now become their own internet service provider by getting transport to Ashburn and landing their hardware there. So the little private college in Lexington, Virginia, now has a presence in the, one of the largest peering centers for the internet in the world. That is pretty much unthinkable uh, just a couple of years ago and a huge technical leap. Um, lastly, the BARC Electric Cooperative looked at the availability of a fiber backbone north and south of the county and east and west and that catalyzed a decision by them to build fiber on their own power rights of way to their rural and severely underserved customers. There are several thousand of them. That's a multi-million dollar investment in the county that would not have happened if it weren't for the RANA network, if it weren't for the RANA infrastructure. So this proposed legislation would have killed RANA before it got started, primarily because it's hard enough to muster the will to tackle tough projects in government without roadblocks being put every feet, every couple feet, and that's what this legislation does. I'd like to introduce Ray Ferris from Roanoke City and the Roanoke Valley Broadband Authority. 